Beth. And I'm Beth. Welcome, Welcome to, to Physics, Physics with Beth and Beth. Hello everyone. Welcome back to Physics with Beth and Beth. I'm Beth and today we are continuing our discussion of AP Physics 1 Unit 2 or Dynamics and Forces. So in this video we're going to be talking about how to draw pictures, specifically free body diagrams. So a little bit of background. One of my professors in undergrad, one of my best professors was Dr. Trashenberg. Um, he was my physics professor for everything from engineering physics one when I was a baby little freshman to some of my 400 level physics classes that I took my senior year. And he always said, whenever you start a problem, the very first step was to draw a picture. So from day one class one with this professor until my 400 level classes senior year, whenever he would ask us what the first step to uh, doing a problem was, we would all drone in unison, draw a picture. But specifically, you have to draw helpful pictures. So that's what we're going to be doing today to help us visualize some of the forces problems you're going to be tackling in AP Physics 1. And we call those helpful pictures free body diagrams. So let's get started. Let's start with the situation that we're going to be modeling today. This is our little rabbit assistant. Uh, between our last video and this one, um, my fellow Beth and I have decided to name him Isaac in honor of Newton. So uh, we have Isaac. Isaac is sitting in my hand here and he's unmoving. He's just sitting at rest in my hand. Thrilling. So now let's figure out how we can represent that in the picture. So first, we just represent Isaac, our little rabbit friend, as a simple dot in a free body diagram. This is Isaac. And we know Isaac over here is being pulled down by gravity. So we're going to draw the force of gravity acting on Isaac as an arrow originating at the dot pointing downward. And now I'm going to label this the force due to gravity. Now, um, Isaac isn't moving, however. He's staying stationary. There's, he has no acceleration. So we know that all of the net forces on him have to add up to zero in order for him to not have any acceleration at all. So if I just had gravity here, he would be plummeting downward into the abyss. Thankfully, that's not happening. He's staying stationary on my palm. So what is the force that is opposing gravity here? Well, if you watched our last video, you would remember that that force is the normal force. And that force is perpendicular to the surface of my hand. So my hand is horizontal. So the normal force is pushing upward at a 90 degree angle to that. And now we see that the magnitude of our force of gravity and our normal force are equal, meaning that the net force that is acting on little Isaac here is zero which means his acceleration is also likewise zero. And thus, this is our little free body diagram. We're done. That was it. Um, but now let's make things a little bit more complicated. Let's say that when Isaac is sitting here on my hand, I just gave him a little tiny push, but not a strong enough push to get him to actually move. Just a little push like that. So how do we represent that? Well, you might be tempted to draw the arrow that denotes the force of the push like this because I'm pushing on Isaac, I'm pushing him this way, right? However, that's not the way that we do it in a free body diagram. Well, the free body diagram, its purpose is to help us do all of the calculations that we need to do, or to help us know what calculations we need to do, rather, whenever we're trying to calculate things about Isaac's motion and movement and position and all of that. So we start our arrows at the body that represents Isaac, and we have the force of my push here, going to the right because I was pushing him east, like so. But then Isaac wasn't moving when I pushed on him, right? I was giving him a little push and he was staying stationary. So currently, in this drawing right here, Isaac would be having a net acceleration going this way because your net force is equal to mass times acceleration, right? But since Isaac isn't moving, we know that his net acceleration has to be zero, or his acceleration has to be zero, which means we need a force that cancels out the force of the push. What force is that? Well, that's going to be friction, and specifically, it's going to be static friction, because Isaac isn't moving. So here we have the force of gravity pulling down, the normal force pushing up, canceling that out. We have the force of our push going east, and we have static friction going west, canceling out the force of our push. One note, the direction of static friction is always opposite of the force that he would be moving if he was. It points parallel to the surface that is causing that friction. So when my hand is horizontal, the force of friction is likewise um, parallel to the uh, plane of my hand there. 
Okay, now let's change things up a little bit. Let's say that I was pushing on Isaac just a little bit harder, and as he was going across the surface of my hand, he actually moved. We get to some really thrilling stuff here in AP Physics 1, don't we? So now we have a rabbit that is moving slowly across the surface of my hand. So if he's starting at rest and then he's moving, that's a change in velocity. So we know he has a non-zero acceleration, right? So we know that the force of this push has to be greater than our force of friction that is trying to slow him down. So I'm going to extend the force of my push just a little bit because I'm pushing just a little bit harder now. So this is the force of my push right here. And then also, well, Isaac is moving now, so he's no longer static, so we don't have static friction anymore. Instead, we have kinetic friction, which is the friction that you get when you have an object that is moving across a surface. Um, so this is a K, not an X, just, I'm, I'm gonna make that a little more clear because my handwriting is bad. So the kinetic friction, there we go. And then also, if you remember from our last video, kinetic friction is always less than static friction. If you're pushing a heavy box across the floor, that's easy to see. It's hard to get the box moving in the first place, but once it starts going, it's a little easier to push. So because of that, I'm going to decrease the magnitude of my friction here. And then let's talk about what our net force is doing. Well, the force of gravity going down and the normal force going upward are equal in magnitude, so they cancel out, so that's that equals zero. We have no net acceleration in our y direction here. But then the force of my push is greater than the force of kinetic friction that's opposing it. So if I were to add up my vectors together, like you might remember from unit one, I have the force of my push plus the force of kinetic friction is going to equal a little force like this. So I have a net acceleration to the east as Isaac speeds up from rest. All right, and that's it. That is our little intro to free body diagrams. We'll continue practicing with them and using them as we go throughout this unit. But thank you all for sticking with me for, through all of that. Y'all are troopers. Happy physicsing. <laughs>